Hello, this is a quick tips video on how to configure your AIM Solo 2. Now you do that through the Race Studio 3 software, so I'm going to click and open up the software, and right now you're going to notice that it says no connected devices. Now the AIM Solo 2 is Wi-Fi enabled, so the first thing you're going to do is click up here and um, you'll be presented with a series of options, and I'm going to click down here on the AIM Solo 2, which is in the list, and it also has my name listed on it, but I'm going to show you how to change that in a minute so it's not confusing when you've got multiple devices that you're trying to connect to if, for example, you're downloading data from multiple devices. So I'm going to click on Connect, and within a matter of seconds, sometimes it can take five seconds or so, sometimes it can take a little bit longer, um, it is going to connect to my uh, AIM Solo 2, and it's going to allow us to be able to configure. So notice uh, that now we have connection and full signal, and I'm going to click on the device itself. So my Solo 2 is called Coven. And the first thing I'm going to be able to show you being able to do that is to work through that uh, and different details. It's in Wi-Fi properties. Just a quick refresher. Live measures is real time information that's coming off of the device. Uh, particularly useful if you have a device that's sending a lot of information um, and uh, is useful to be able to log. For example, RPMs and engine temperatures, etc, etc. Very useful to be able to have which you can then record and, and use. But we're setting up a Solo 2. Uh, the next tab is Download. This is if you have any sessions, you can download your data. But what we want to do is we want to look at configuration. So the first thing is, is how did I get mine called Coburn? Well, simply you can call the device anything you want. And so I put my last name on it because as I'm in the garage with other people, there are other devices and I've put them on their last name, which makes it easy to know uh, whose device I'm connected to. The Wi-Fi um, information is useful if you want to be able to connect this to a network so that you don't always have to disconnect from your Wi-Fi network to be able to connect to your Solo 2, but we're going to use it uh, as an access point today. Now the first piece of information that is really useful for regular usage is properties. Racer name is me, uh, the vehicle number uh, and uh, vehicle is FF1683, so Formula Ford 1600, as is the championship. Now this is useful because typically devices get used by the same person over and over again and we don't change cars that often. And so this just allows you to pre-populate a lot of the information that you'll need when you download the data. So that's the first thing. The next thing to be able to have a look at is settings. Now on here, we have the option of changing certain parameters that uh, can be changed on both the device, but it's far easier in the software at a click of a, uh, a mouse button. And so you can see we can change date format, the time. A lot of people don't do this, and I actually think it's really important as you download the data from the device to know when the session was, even when the weekend uh, was that you're working with. And then there are other things you can also download. The backlight color, for example, or having night vision, which illuminates uh, the screen um, as well. So a lot of great information here uh, that you can configure. Uh, the next one along is tracks. Now I'll do another video to be able to show you how to be able to get tracks. Um, I have loaded all of the tracks on here that are in the United Kingdom. You can have them across the world, you can have all of them, very few of them, and we'll talk through that uh, in another video. Additional to that, we have logo. Now, pre-populated onto the Solo 2 is the AIM logo. But if you've got a company or a brand or you work with a race team or you've just got your own logo that you'd like to be able to place, you can actually upload that every time you turn on the device, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so you can click on select here and you can go now on my desktop I put the Avon tires logo. I think it works very well for this demonstration plus uh, as a Formula 4 driver We use Avon tires and so that's nice if I click on that file there uh, and uh, Open it up it then pre-populates what that would look like if it shows up on the screen Now obviously the resolution has changed because the resolution on the Solo 2 screen isn't necessarily fantastic But at the same time it just shows you what it would look like you can change some parameters on here. You could have a black background if you wanted, or you could have white. Uh, I'm going to have it uh, like it is here, and I'm just going to click on Transmit. This is going to send the logo to the device, and I know when it's finished because it will show you on the screen. And what I'll do is I'll place a photograph at the end of this video uh, to be able to show you what that looks like. If you ever wanted to be able to go back to the AIM logo, you can just click here, and it goes back again. So. Um, uh, a very good way of being able to customize your device a little bit further. The last thing to have a look at is firmware. I've just uploaded a video or will upload a video with this one that shows how to update the firmware, but this just shows you what version is on your device and if there are updates and walk you through. So 
A very quick and simple overview of how to configure your AIM Solo 2 using the Ray Studio software and ensuring that it's easier to get some things done on a computer screen than it is necessary on the device itself. So have fun setting it up and thank you.